You are listening to Quarters and Barra. I am Glenn Quartermain, veteran sports writer with the West Australian. With me is Adrian Barrich of Channel 7, Perth Football Club, and of course, West Coast Eagles fame. We are brought to you by Tab Touch. Got the touch? Download the Tab Touch app today. Chances are you're about to lose. For free and confidential support, visit gamblinghelponline.org.au. Before we get on to, let's start with Frio Barra. In what was a disappointing weekend, the weekly winner of the Quarters and Barra game tipping competition, Carl Heslop with six correct. Mm. Overall leader, Cran Dogs, 84 total. Six for me this week. Well, well done, done, me. 80 in total and three for you. Bit of yeah, a... I know. I, I, went, I went with Port as well, which they let me down. But mm-hmm. And obviously, we I tipped the Dockers. You obviously didn't, did you? Uh, did I tip the Dockers? Yes, I did. You did tip yes, the Dockers? Yes, and, I did. And you still got... Hang on. Wasn't it only six games? No, I got five. Sorry, that should that's that's an incorrect, but that's okay. Oh, I got five. Right. I'll take okay. that. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the doc, so that I was going to segue into saying, well, we were both wrong about yeah. the Dockers because I was convinced that they'd turn the corner, but they still may have Barra. I'm not prepared to throw the baby out with the bathwater just yet. I reckon it was... No, but what I'm saying yeah. is they lost. Yeah, the, they lost badly. <laughs> yeah, so we thought no, they, they lost badly. We thought they pumped Melbourne. We thought, oh, this is it. They're charging. This is their run to the top four. They'll go to Marvel where they've been okay and they'll mm. fix up the Bulldogs that beat them before, just four weeks ago, or six weeks ago or something. And I think all that... I think they... they there's a famous saying, publicity is like poison. It doesn't hurt you unless you swallow it. Mm. I have a feeling... Maybe they read Rhino's column where he said Flag Man and was on again and he did a little poem and a song about here they come, this is it, this is the big one. Um, Leif Garrett, a man who knew a lot about... Who had Leif a lot, Garrett, s- surfing USA. Yeah, Leif Jeez, Garrett. we're going back to 1978 and the countdown charts. Barrett. A man who had a lot to be humble about, would you say or not? <laughs> Leif Garrett? Oh, yeah, yeah. He said, don't believe your own publicity, you can't. You start thinking that you're better than you are. And I have a feeling that because they'd beaten them before and they said, oh, well, and Norton's out as well and Darcy's out, um, surely we go over there and it's going to be sweet. We'll just rock up. And they weren't ready for it. Probably you should have sh- changed the team, I reckon. I know you can't change a team that wins by 90 points. No, it's pretty hard. Uh, and, but they needed, really needed to just have one or two blokes like desperate. Because w- we came up against Peel and Will Brody, mate, how he's not playing is unbelievable. He's, he was on fire. Erasmus was fantastic. Um, even that Ruckman, Reedy, he's a giant. He had 53 hit outs. Uh, there's no place for a Ruckman, no. but feels like, I reckon, even the coaching. I mean, I don't normally have a go at the match committee, but in this situation, I think they got it wrong. Uh, there's a couple of reasons why they, they got it wrong, but I think they totally got it wrong. They weren't prepared for what Bevo had coming to them. Like Bevo, he's just going to sit on his hands and go, yeah, we'll play the same way he played last time. He didn't have Norton. He didn't have Darcy. He had to change it up. He pushed, you know, he rolled Ed Richards forward. As soon as the first bounce went, it was obviously Sarong, Young and Brayshaw. And they're up against the Bont, Libba and uh, who's, or, or Trelaw, their third midfielder. Then straight after that, he just changed it right up. Richards comes flying in. Good player, Richards. Yeah. Eugle Hagen plays up the ground. They started going through Luke Ryan's man. So to keep him accountable, they'd kick to hit so Luke So we Ryan's started man. to see, are they going to do a Tom Stewart now on Luke Ryan? And he, we started to see that. Opposition and teams he got found to... out. He got found out. And and Bont pushed forward. They must have known. I saw J-Lo on telly last night. Mm-hmm. And he said we knew he was going to put. Don't get beaten by what you know. Well, of course don't, he's going to... don't get beaten by what you know. Well, that's, the, that's the one thing in footy, isn't it? Yeah, the week before he was restricted to two clearances, Bond, he was well tagged and then went forward and kicked three goals. So yeah. we know he's going to do it. What do you think about that? Should they have put a hard tag on him? I think they should have, not from the start, but as I said last week, your plan B plus very quickly when you know it's clearly on, Bont's on. He's, you need to on. do something and about And Hayden it. Young had the responsibility. Yep. But he just wasn't playing him tight enough and maybe he didn't get the message. But it goes back to coaching. I mean, and during the match, I mean, you could see the Bont was on fire. He's on fire. Get the, get the fire extinguisher out there and try to put him out for a while. Sit on him. The way they let him run forward free, mm. he had so much space, didn't he? A couple he of times it. there. Was just, he ran into an open goal on his own. I know the ball turned over, but it, no one, Bont should never be on his own. How good was that goal he kicked? 
It's my the it's one actually, where he beat Pierce. I think and it's goal of the year. Luke Ryan. I think it's goal of the year. Yeah, mate, you 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 go. You make the a little good point. dinky Irish kick in there just to. He's <laughs> such a freak though. And then to regain and his balance. And off Pierce, who's no mug and quick. And, and Ryan, I think, was in that yeah, contest Ryan was as well. In there. So <laughs> there was a sort of a third player nearby too. So it was an excellent goal, and I think. Um, yeah, let, the only thing I'll say about the coaching is that Heath Chapman pulled out late. Mm-hmm. So I believe that Heath Chapman was supposed to be the man for Bont when he went forward. So that was their plan. They, they trained it. They talked about it. Okay, Heath, when Bont pushes forward, you pick him up. Makes sense. So Heath goes out, okay, late. So suddenly they've got to change it up. They obviously didn't do enough work on this plan B. I, get, you know, quarters, I hate to say this, but they just didn't have a plan B. I mean, that sounds horrible. But they didn't have a plan B for the Bulldogs, and they got their pants pulled down, and they end up getting pumped in the end. And I don't know what it says, or I, because probably they'll come out and beat the Suns this weekend, won't they? I, look, I'm prepared to give them a mulligan. I don't think it's. Uh, I think they've been pretty good in recent weeks, and so I think you put that aside and let's see what happens this week, and let's see what happens next time they go on the road. More importantly, mm. um, but I reckon that look, they're still in the eight. And, you know, all is not lost. Oh, no. It was a yeah. really bad I'm just lesson. talking about this one game. Yeah, they game. got spanked. They that, did get spanked. And, then it, and there was some signs there that the coaching was an up to scratch. Yep. Just in this game, right? They weren't prepared. Bevo was ready. He had all these plans. He had Richards doing this. He had, you know, Eugle Hagen doing that. He had stuff going on. But that's not stuff they and just... And they weren't ready for They've been it. doing that a lot this year. That's not just well, new. Well, they've started it now because of Norton being out mm-hmm. and Darcy being out. So it's changed everything up. Even Lobb was on fire. I mean, I guess Lobb was always going to lift, but I think they probably even underestimated Lobb. What did he kick? Did he kick three as well? Yep, he did. <laughs> that, that was the ultimate insult, wasn't it? Yeah, so it was. I really think, you know... I, I, He's gonna. I heard him on the telly last night, and he sh- he sort of Justin pushed it home to the players, and apparently the review was scathing. For what I've been told, as it should be. And some of the boys really copped it. And I know going into the game, Jordan Clark was unwell. Like he wouldn't if the bye the week before, he wouldn't have played. That's how unwell he was. Mm-hmm. So he he sort of goes in underdone. But a lot of the guys got some really scathing reviews. Sharp was very quiet. But they needed the coaching staff needed a scathing review. Mm. Seriously, that's what that's really what needed to be done. There was no. I bet you they have. But they've got that team defence right, and mm. I think they get stuck in it. You know, we've got the team defence, but the team defence fell apart under Bevo's coaching, and they they didn't react. They just did not react, and you know that's that is a bad sign. And I'm sure that they next time they'll be better prepared and we'll have other plans, but. You know, you sometimes a match day. You have to be a match day coach as well as a coach during the week, don't you? You do. Seems like they do a lot of it's crucial. Yeah, I know. But a lot of those guys, I think um, Goodwin's the same. On he, he goes I mean, to water. I reckon Longmuir's had some good performances in the coaches' box this year, though. But I, yeah, I agree with you at yeah. the weekend. But I reckon, I reckon it's let's give it a mulligan. And let's see what they produce this week and next time. Well, you know, but that's what happens with Frio, doesn't it? Mm. It's that cycle, isn't it? You've seen that famous meme that they've got where you get excited, you think you're going to win the flag, then you go back. You go go in the circle again, you go in the circle again. This happened again. Mm. And when we thought they'd cross that barrier, that cross that plane, didn't we? We thought, no, no, no. Not over just yet, but yeah. No, I'm not saying it's over. But then you look at Collingwood and they go bang, and you and you, you very look impressive. Swannies just go cop this. <laughs> By the way, very impressive from North. We'll get onto that game in a second because we've got a bit to um, to look at it yeah, in that game. Yeah. But let's talk about Elliot Yo and the probably let's just call it likelihood now that he's going to remain at West Coast with an extra extra year tacked onto the deal. So that's good news for uh, West Coast. I am not surprised, Barra, if that's if that's going to be the case because. You know, about to start a new family, and he has got some pretty deep roots here in Western Australia. Deep roots, right? Yeah, well, he's, yeah, and he's got a baby on the way. Yeah. And, but, but, yeah, he was on radio this morning on 96 FM, um, which he does on a Tuesday. So it was good because Ryan and I were tossing it up um, last night before the news. So shall we do? Shall we say something tonight? Duff's been doing a bit about it that you know things were coming you know, moving and there'd be more communication. And so we ran something last night and I think Peter it was in the West as well. And yeah, he, he jumped on radio and said, there's been more communication in the last 24 hours. There's been more contact in the last 48 hours, he said, actually. And so it is actually looking good. So it sounds like he's going to get that third year. So he's 29. Do you think he deserves the third year? 
On this year's form, yep, I'll cop that. You happy with that? Yep. Okay. You? Even with their injury history and that sort of thing? I think three years is okay. I think any It's almost lo- like for service. Any longer, it? I don't think so. But I think three years I can live with. And I reckon they're building in stuff for after footy as well. Because mm. they're saying, you know, you know, okay, well, you are a premiership hero. Probably should have won the Norm Smith in some ways in 2018. He was so good. Uh, and that's and the other clubs have seen him this year, and they thought, you know what, let's go for him, let's come mm. for him. He's the last big free agency bloke. Let's try to grab him. And the, the offers were massive. So full credit to Yoey, if you're listening, Yoey, and and uh, Jason Dover, your manager, full credit because uh, probably he's probably going to drop several hundred thousand dollars to stay here. I mean, you probably you do that anyway normally, don't you? That's what everyone has historically. West Coast had to do it to win the flag. It's a lifestyle choice, isn't it? It's a it's a you're closer to your family. Sydney's going to have to do it. Like Logan McDonald's in that exact situation at the moment. They're going, this is what we can give you. We've got to sign Warner down the track and all mm. the rest of it. And you go, oh, geez, that's, I can make so much money somewhere else. Mm. So you make that choice to be a one-team player, maybe. And that's that's probably where Yoey's at. So full credit to him if he does sign, which sounds like he will. North Melbourne Collingwood, extraordinary game, Barra. Extraordinary <laughs> game. You looked at it and it was eight goals to zip, and you're thinking, here we go. And then, you, and you, but in the back of your mind, you knew this ain't over yet. 54 points. Yeah, incredible comeback. Well, st- well done to Collingwood. And of course, as soon as it got close, you knew a couple right. of things there. Have you got the stats here? Seventh biggest all time mm. comeback. And equal third this century with remember the Eagles in 06? Yeah, I do. In Geelong, I do. 54 points. Mm. Same thing. Same thing. We still talk about that at West Coast. They'll still be talking about this game, even though it was North Melbourne. It's still. I think North is showing signs. So it's a bit like Hawthorne and Port about six weeks ago. Even though the Hawks lost the game, they were still considerably up on the opposition at home. So I think you'll draw something from that, North Melbourne. I really felt for the 50-metre the penalty, let's talk about this, clearly it was a 50-metre penalty. So, and I, I thought it was a bit um, hard to fathom Laura Kane's explanation on the free kick. Yeah, I, I didn't Scott think Scott taking handled... a couple of steps. It was just a 50-metre penalty. And there was two of them. Did she handle that? I don't think she handled that well, no. Laura. I mean, I think she's... They need to admit they made an error there and that it was a 50-metre penalty not paid. And... If that had been a Collingwood player... Would that 50 metre have been played? Late in the game, oh. come on. Well, of course was, it would have. There was a couple of other incidents, wasn't there? Holding the ball on Dacos where he looked like he did a big spin yeah. and then looked like he almost dropped it. It's so much congestion. You've got to hand it to the pies, though, the way they no, just well, come. We're not taking away from them. It's a great Their surging comeback. is just the surge of the, all of the, sur- the great surges. And it's, it's all like, caution to the wind. They just go, don't they? They just go. And I, look, I, want, I do want to say... Uh, there's been a lot of criticism of Clarkson moving, will, will benching or subbing Will Phillips out at three-quarter time. He was cooked, mate. Dacos had taken control in the third quarter. So I think the move was right. What I probably wouldn't have done is taken him off the ground. I would have just changed the tag. So Shields went on to him, had obviously... He got his pants yeah, absolutely his, pulled but down. But so did Phillips late in that third quarter. <laughs> what have so been as bad as that? Signs, Dacos won the game. yeah. Well, it was looking <laughs> ominous. So, but his third third efforts are just phenomenal. They are. They <laughs> he gets are. on the end of it. You go, where did he come from? What about your boy, Bobby Hill? Oh, mate, mark of the century. Uh, Elliot's is better. Oh! <laughs> but I'll tell you what. Why have you gone with Elliot's? Well, I reckon they're just a marginally better, that's all. Really? But they're still two cracking marks. Oh, mate. But the, he went up. He, 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 I thought it was Ash Sampy all over again. I'll give him, I'll give him land of the year. Mate, well, landed like landed. a cat. <laughs> He's like, boom. Man, and Ash did the same thing. When Ash took that absolute hanger. Ash which, Sampy. Which is what made Sam Kerr absolutely love Ash Sam. Mm-hmm. She told us that, that she loved Ash Sampy, her, her favourite player apart from her brother. And it was because of that absolute hanger. Mate, that was a great mark. I mean, so you're saying that Elliot's better, eh? Yeah, I, I think so. Uh, wow. I just reckon a bit... Yeah, look, they were both great marks. It's hard to split them, Barra. They'll get, they're going to be one and two at this stage. And if someone can take a better mark than that, then... Gee, what about his... Treat. Actually, what a, quarters, what about his last mark? Oh, yeah, To courageous. win the game. Yeah, to win the game. pretty good. I mean, that's... That's up there too, isn't yeah, it? it? Is. Get smashed. He might get two nominations. Is it, they nominated those yet? <laughs> I don't well, know. He may get two this week. But he's from Northam. He's a Perth player. He's my man. So I'm, I'm claiming him. I'm all over no, him. I mean, him. I love the bloke. But he's been just the, what a 
friggin' sensation mm. he is and how much excitement does he add to the game and how good was he? So talk- five goals. Bobby Hill, kick five goals, Duda. Remember, you remember Archie Duda? Yep. Archie Duda, kick 10 goals, mm. Duda. They used to be the famous East Perth song. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a Bobby Hill one. Actually, all the kids, can you ask your sons? Yes. Are they at Newman? Where are they? No, Trinity. Trinity. Oh, that's right. Money bags. Right. So, oh, please. <laughs> please. Well, on a scholarship, are they? Oh. <laughs> yeah. Don't see me driving around in a, in a roller, mate, or in a <laughs> Range Rover. He's, you, Just a you're, battler. You're a, claiming the man of the people, but a battler, mate. your sons are at a private school, mate. Yeah, they are. <laughs> and we sacrifice. But it's Catholic. But it's Catholic. It is. So they're a bit lesser. That's right. That's <laughs> listen, right. listen. So in the, ask your sons for, for, for... Oh, they love Bobby Hill. For Thursday. Who, you know, so when, when you went for a hanger in the, in the mm. schoolyard, who, what did you yell out? Um, I was... I was Nazi. Nazi! And then it was Roach. We had Bizasto. Yeah, Bizasto, yeah. Uh, Kappa. 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 you're beauty. Jezalenka, Jezza. Yeah, that's right. Kappa, Kappa got a run for a while there. He did. What was yours, Nazi? Yeah, Peter Knights. Doesn't sort of roll off the tongue. Oh, yeah, Nazi, does. does it? He, <laughs> mate, he, took, he took a hang every week, Knights. <laughs> so now it's Hilly. Yeah, oh, he's, he's a good player. Oh, Very mate. good player. If, I don't know if. Would they know that, that that's what happens with kids in the in the Of course they do. Yeah. Because they did it themselves at did one point. Did you know, point. at one of the private schools, the probably the most elite one mm-hmm. uh, in terms of edu- uh, academia, yep. you, you're not allowed to have kick to kick. Why is that? Because someone might get injured and there could be legal ramifications. So we had what we called, we were, so we were just battlers out in the eastern suburbs of Melbourne, <laughs> and just near the foot of the Dandenongs. Oh, yeah. And we had a competition at lunchtime called Golden Boots. <laughs> and we'd have, our, um, we'd have our uniform on still, our school uniform, so that, you know, long of pants. Course. And, that. and you'd go... You'd, you'd tear your pockets. Sit, oh, yeah. You'd go back in, um, you'd get home, and Sweaty. your mum would say, what have you been doing today? <laughs> your shirt's covered in grass stains. You've got one button left out of six. You've got holes in your <laughs> knees of your jeans. The only thing you'd wear, because it's pretty boggy, the oval there, you'd take your footy boots. But, uh, you put your boots on, yeah, did you? Yeah, yeah. Mate, that's a bit dangerous. Oh, not really. Mate, you know, that's what changed me from playing rugby, because I was a rugby player mm. till 16, 17, and it was taking hangs at lunchtime that made me think, you know what, this game's not bad. Because yeah. Wazzy Rules was Puparama in you know, 1982 in Canberra. Like, it was sort of nowheresville. And it was a big, a big step for me to go from first eighteen into first, first fifteen to first eighteen. Mm. But it was because of taking hangers like wow. that, okay. and, and trying to take screamers, and, and it, it was fun though. But can you believe that there is a school in WA where, that no, won't allow? No, I can't believe that that's... because the da- the, all the dads are judges. Now and they need hitters. to change that. That's that's not on. No, but, but, but but you could get sued for hurting someone or injuring someone or surely knocking let, somebody let kids, out. Surely you can let kids be kids. I know you think so, but this is what happens in the upper echelons, my friend. I remember a kid coming to school with him and saying, "Come up, come up the back of the oval." We're, and all these kids were going there, and I said, "What's going on?" They said, "Oh, we get we're having fights." And this kid had a mouth guard, right? And they're having fights, and I said, "No, call me Mister Picky." I'm going up there to get my head punched in, couldn't fight my way out of wet dunny paper barrel. So I said, "No." no. <laughs> Anyway, I didn't bring my mouth guard. I couldn't believe that these kids are bringing mouth What guards. excuses did you use? Oh, I forgot my mouth guard. Yeah, I forgot my what mouth else? guard. Oh, I've got to do I've got detention. detention. Yeah, <laughs> got a rubbish duty around the canteen. Oh, no. I've got to go and eat me lunch. But we used to get the old 4 and 20 pie and a bag of cheese twisties. And you'd poke the twisties <laughs> yeah, into the pie and then cover them with tomato sauce. <laughs> Try it. It's still pretty yeah, good. It was a tuck shop. Yeah. Hey, we've got to talk about Dusty, mate. Yeah, I mean, was, let's talk I, about I, that How game. many people was it? 92,000. 92,000. Now, I've got the stats here for you. 92,311. Um, the biggest crowd, home and away crowd between Richmond and Hawthorne ever, ever, all time. So over 100 and whatever years, 450 years. And a great... Eight, hang on. Eighth best home and away crowd in the history of the game. Mm. <laughs> eighth best ever. And all for one man. And when he kicked that first goal, did you think, mate, it's happening. The fairy tale. It's on. I was hoping not. <laughs> oh yeah, because you're going for Hawthorne. Yeah, of course. But uh, did you think it would? Did you think? Hang on. This is this is going to happen. He's going to he's going to roll back the. He's going to roll back. No, the, I th- I, I, you can see he's lost kick pace. Four, he, kick four. Kick five. He's not breaking the tackles like he used to. He's lost a bit of pace as you do. Mm. So I wasn't really fearing that. I was interested to see 
how Hawthorne would respond to Mate. big crowd and favouritism. Didn't they, didn't and, they handle and it And they well. responded really well. But they but, prepared for it well. So this is what I'm saying about J-Lo. Sam Mitchell prepared. He prepared your boys. He said, boys, you know what's going to happen here? This is, there's going to be 90,000 and they're all going to be cheering for one bloke and one club. And so we just got to be ready for all. And so they were so ready for it. Did you hear his comment after the game? <laughs> As a footy fan, it was a great bit of theatre that he kicked the first goal. And I think even even barracking for Hawthorne, you hope and Dusty kicks the first goal because it's the theatre of the game. Yeah. I don't reckon. I would have loved to have seen him them win. No, no. Just no, for the history of it. No, he's, do, he's done us over. Because he would have talked about that for years. Oh, he's done us over a few times, mate. I'm pretty happy to win it. Hey. What would you think of the interview afterwards? It was okay. It was good. But that no, was, it was bloody good, mate. Yeah, but mate, about it was one, epic. And he about, asked him all these questions. How about and he, one in the lead up? Yeah, yeah. We, we, we discussed that last mm. week. And we gave him a clip for that. But, mate, Jack Revolt comes out. He asked him a million questions. He, he, and you know what Dusty did? He goes... Yeah, I'm going to answer it this way, and this is what I'm saying. I'm going to keep saying it. I love, I love my, you know, I love the people. Though the support's been amazing. He didn't say jack shit, but it was just great to hear him. But talk. he did say when he said, "Will we? Sit, is this it, or are you coming back in two weeks?" He said, "Free, I think it is too." It isn't free, by the way. Yeah, I got it's that not, wrong. Oh, okay. No, but you know what? How good? Uh, so what? Yeah, okay. So let's ask. Oh, let's canvas that. What happens now? Oh, he'll play again. I think plays again, mm-hmm. and does next year? No. Outski or maybe Gold Coast, Sydney then, Gold for Coast. Me, I think if it's anywhere, it'd be Gold Coast. I can't see him leaving the Tigers nah. after that. Well, after ninety-two thousand people turn out. There's a lot of love there. He strikes me as a classic one-club player, but I don't think he'll play next year, mate. I think it's done. But have one question: Is there a player more loved by his club? I don't think there is. Mm. This is. Nine, let's say Cuzzy? 70% Cuzzy percent of those it. fans turned up to see Dusty at the weekend, probably knowing, hoping they were going to win, but probably knowing they weren't. It was just a, a big thank you for, mm. nah, I mean. These Peter mate, Dacos? Well, yeah, look, much love. Because Collingwood, biggest club, probably. I reckon Dusty's got Have it. they, who's there been there, there? Oh, Dakes is pretty popular. I mean, there's been a few. I mean, even now with, the Darren Dake, with Nick Dacos. Yeah, no, nah, Peter Dacos was pretty special. I mean, at Hawthorne, you had Lee Matthews. I mean, at Geelong, you had Gary Ablett Senior. He was much loved by Geelong. But I reckon this bloke's got him. Mm. Just in terms, he's won three Norm Smith medals. So they're just saying. He's a new him. Kevin Bartlett slash Royce Hart. I reckon bigger. Bigger. And that's saying something because they're two pretty good players. <laughs> Mate, did you hear the story about him leaving his car at the MCG yeah. for six months? Yeah, <laughs> after they won the grand final. <laughs> what yeah. was going on there? Because he just left his car there. And Mick Malloy did that. That was stu- one big parking fine. <laughs> well, and Mick Malloy did that stunt where he went back and found the car. And they opened it up, and in the glove box, it was some, some tickets to some sort of effeminate play that yeah. <laughs> he wouldn't have thought. Then they put the music on, it was gold, solid gold or yeah. something. And then they opened the boot. Guess who was in the boot? Who was in the boot? <laughs> KB. Oh, KB. KB was in the boot <laughs> for six months. <laughs> he said it was worth it. I didn't have to pay for parking. Because <laughs> you know how tidy is. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, I do. I do. Oh, uh, but, was... but, but Dusty. Mate, what do you think is going to happen? Seriously, no, you I don't think, think he just play retires. Me. I think so. But yeah. if he does go anywhere, I think it's Gold Coast with Dimmer Hardwick. But I think he retires. I'd hate to see it actually. I'd like to. I like the old romance of the one club player. Yeah. I'd like to see him just finish with Richmond. I don't think he's playing next year, mate. I think it's poetic, and he. Um, let's hope he comes here in round seventeen. Let's hope at Optus in round seventeen we get to see him, and we send him off a little bit in WA style. What do you reckon? Oh, yeah. Benny can walk laps with him or something. Ben got flown over. He mm-hmm. was part of the whole celebration. Um, I think he might even stay with Ben while he's here. So that'd be something. I hope he really, I really hope he comes here. A couple so of other games him. just to discuss. Um, you want to do Petrarca, though, well, didn't you? Oh, let's do Petrarca first. So and then the WA under 18s. Horrendous. We've got to, yeah, that's yeah. horrendous. So Petrarca now tells us his blood levels were so low, he couldn't have a general anaesthetic. Oh. So. Basically, he had his Explain surgery that. with his eyes open, having a bit of a look. Apparently, I don't know about medicine. Explain that. Please. Oh, that's coming. Don't worry. <laughs> There's some uh, good mail coming to us. But look, I think... Can I just say, yeah. one of my best friends is a neurosurgeon. <laughs> is he? <laughs> is he? That's why I'm just getting on the front foot for that guy. So what did you make of the Petrarca comments? For, well, Man, I, mean, I can't believe... Imagine getting having surgery without no, a, a general anaesthetic. Mm. And, and, mate... What can you, you know, say? Some about, people have the, the uh, sit up for the old vasectomy. 
And I'll put my hand yeah, up. Yeah, whoosh And I'll put my hand blokes. up. I've had it. I'll put my hand up. I said, no, thanks. Go Give back me the to general. Work. I'm yeah. going down. Wish I went back to work. I'm not staying up to look at that. What do you reckon about, <laughs> does the, and the way the AFL handled the Petrarca thing, nah, nothing to see here. I mean, honestly. Really? It's forced our eyes open, which is not a bad thing. And I think even Petrarca now seems a bit, uh, I, I wouldn't be doing that again. He can't be blase. But he didn't know at the time. To, in their defence and in his defence, I keep saying this, but they didn't know the extent of it at the time. Well, but, they're talking about bringing uh, ultrasound machines yeah. to the grounds yep. now, like they do in America. Expensive. So the dogs but, can actually do something. Yeah, and, uh, most but don't NFL, tell me the dogs. I know that I've been... Accused of not being a medical person, as Mick would say, I'm not a I'm not a medical. Are we getting there? I'm not a doctor. Don't worry, we'll get there. But surely the doctors can tell if you've got four broken ribs. Broken ribs, yes. I don't think the other injuries, though. Um, so, but anyway, um, the other uh, the WA under 18s, mate. Uh, yeah, let's talk pay about tribute them. to those. Just got blokes. a couple of other AFL games to get to, so let's just quickly talk about GWS Port. What difference does Josh Kelly make? How different? Are oh, we going back to the games? Are we? And we then we'll get on the to games, WA. I didn't know we'd started. Well, no, GWS v Port Adelaide. So I just want to say what a difference Josh Kelly makes to that team. He comes back into that side and they look completely different. So well done to them. And I still reckon they've got a big say in the remainder of this season, Barra. I reckon they can go deep still. Big 9,000 people at mm. their stadium. And they haven't exactly conquered the western suburbs, have they? What What do you make of Port Adelaide? What's his name? It's been suspended now too, isn't he? Well, he's challenged that. Has he? Butters has challenged it. It'll be up at the tribunal tonight. So I've got to say, given, what was it, Jesse Hogan that escaped? I mean, mm. that's a fine, surely. I mean, it was it, you shouldn't be doing it. I, and the AFL does not like that behind play contact. They don't like it. So I understand why there's a focus. But surely that is a fine, not a suspension. Did they get it right also in selection, Port Adelaide, Ken Hinckley, sacking Charlie and also Finlayson? So well, Charlie's having a holiday. He's three weeks. Yeah, he copped three. the sandful. Yeah, he was... You know, well, they probably did get it wrong because they, they kicked six goals. So you've got to say that. But look, well done. I don't think we should take too much away from GWS. And um, it was just a just a, a great game to, I guess, reinsert themselves into the conversation. So I think they're there. And the other game was Brisbane um, v St Kilda and found a way again Brisbane at the Gabba. Joe Danaher, five goals. So their forwards are getting it done, mate. So I think Brisbane's still hanging in there. It's really interesting, that log jam between, what is it, sort of fifth and all the way down to 12th, 13th. So it's an incredible season, really, that we're at. I think grand final spots are up for grabs, that's for sure. Now, you want to talk about WA, great, the great effort by the State 18 boys. Mm. Yeah. yeah, all right, mate. Just, I don't know if you watched it, but so there'd been a lot of chat in the lead up and after they got beaten by the Allies in in their first game, uh, people were saying our development's no good. Well, they were twice the size, the Allies. Our kids are no academy. good. Academy. Yeah, well, those academies are working well. Mm. That needs to be tweaked. But A lot more money and resources. But the South do. Australians look bigger too, and it was at Alberton Oval. Have mm. you been to Alberton Oval? I have. Actually, interesting you should ask, because drove across the Malabar at Christmas, and on the way, to, just as we pulled into Adelaide, I said to my boys, I'm just going to detour via Alberton, because I'd never been there. So I just wanted to have a look at it. And... Um, I was quite surprised. It's a lovely little boutique suburb. I thought it was going to be, Jack, park your car and it'll be bricked up and the wheels are gone. But no, no, no not at all. It's a beautiful quite ground yeah, too. It is. Yeah. This is. See, we've got chemistry going on this podcast because mm. I know what to ask you to get you to talk. Um, <laughs> what to talk I about like grounds, the car. I did like mountains, the, I did, <laughs> hiking, I did like, walking. I did like the cartwheel. <laughs> oh, yeah, our man. See, he's my, he's, he's my man from Perth Footy Club. Um, Kobe Evans. Kicked two goals in the last quarter, did a backflip. I think Scotty Moore, our Colts coach, taught him that. No, he didn't. Or Cuzzy, maybe. Cuzzy's our Colts assistant coach as well. But I was so happy because I know most of these kids, because half of them are from Claremont. <laughs> so this week they play before the Dockers game, and then they play at Claremont Oval. Who they got before the Dockers game? I'm not sure, actually. Hey, I should, um, I should have known that. Did he quite stick that backflip? He, he looked a bit looked I reckon a bit it was shaky. a little bit dodgy. I was a bit worried when he did it. I thought, hang on. Fantastic kid. He was so pumped. But Max Raw, my mate Nick, who works down the road, yeah. his son, Maxie, uh, overager, kicked four, could have kicked five. Big bugger. I, I never seen him play like that. Kyle Gerine, he was unbelievable. Charlie, Bo Allen. Bo Allen. Bo Allen. Coming back from an injury. Mate, he's going to get drafted. So we've gone from the 
the critics and the Victorians saying, oh, you'll get Malachi Champion drafted, maybe that's about it. One, I reckon 10 now, between 7 Jesus and 10. Cool. Oh, mate, Charlie Banfield. See mm-hmm. Charlie Banfield go back with the ball? You know, Drew's son, yeah. Drew's youngest. You know how they always say the youngest is always the best? Do they? Like the Selwoods. Mm. Wait till the next guy comes through. Wasn't. He's fantastic. I was the youngest. <laughs> I wasn't the best. What happened to that? Did your brothers play AFL though? No, he played um, under 19s. Well, you, Had a you, bit of a run. you did in the journalism sense. So there you go. Malachi Champion was in there. Um, this kid, Fred Rodriguez, under Aja, mate, he just had the ball on a string. It was so good. It's an impressive win and a big win too. Like not just a win. It was emphatic in the end. So against a... Mate, they never bent. They never and good. Well done to Mark. Have they copped a bit back in Adelaide, south of the South Australian team? Yeah, absolutely, a Mark, Mark Webb, very good coach. Kobe Curtin, which is Dan's bro- younger brother. Yep. So they flew over, and Dan spoke to them uh, before the game. Okay, Dan. About Curtin. the fact he's not getting a game. No, yet. no. Just said, that, "How good is this? I love under 18s This is what got me to Needs the to AFL." Hey, whatever he said, mate, it bloody worked. Will Hayes, friend of mine, little fellow, kicks goals. Hamish Davis, I reckon, is going to get drafted too. Charlie Burke, um, Darcy Peterson, Luke Urquhart. They had a ruckman, Aiden Riddle, just killed it. Uh, Hugh Boxhill, um, and who was the kid? Oh, Blake Kelly. Blake Kelly's another one to watch out for. So well done to well, coach that, that too. whole program. They've got Mark Webb involved. They've got yeah, Sharon Wellingham's involved. Um, so Sharon's, uh, uh, you know, an assistant there. So well done to them. It's a, it's a great performance. No, it was it was spectacular. And for all the critics, just have a good look at yourselves there. Mate, how good was the golf too? Did you watch the golf? Oh, Are you a golfer? Yeah, well, I'm a terrible golfer, but Mate, I do enjoy it. One of the Bryson great, has won me over. One of the great chokes, though, by Rory McIlroy. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, that you know that four-footer you know that four footer on the 18th, oh, on the 72nd? Yeah. Mate, that was hard. Downhill, left to right. Six, the 16th or the 17th? That, that, was, that was bad. Yeah. That was the one that cost him the tournament. And he, so he definitely tightened up the great And man. Bryson, the up and down from the bunker, one of the great shots. And that's what majors 55 are about, 55 yards. Mate. That's what majors are about. They reckon... Oh, I had the stats here. He had, a, he had like a one percent chance of getting within four foot. Um, they've, they've done the stats, and he, he, it's that's going to. You know what's going to happen now? We'll go to Pinehurst, two, wasn't it? Pinehurst, Pinehurst number two, number two. Yeah. So one day you and me, or me and Mark Hepburn, or me and my mate uh, Gavin Cordell, whoever it is, you know, loves playing golf. Pikey, Pikey shoots one over normally. He's mm. a, off a one handicap. You'll go there. And you'll drop a ball in that, in that have bunker, won't you? It won't, you'll, you won't, won't matter where your ball well, is. You'll drop you, it in. Yeah, you and will. try to get close of as Bryson, as good as Bryson. It doesn't matter what you do, mate. Once you're on the putting surface, you won't have a hope. Have you seen those putting surfaces? <laughs> they're, they're concave. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Did you see the guy, the presented? Mate, so, he, so Bryson, so he's like a super nerd, right? Mm. But he's a giant and he can smash the ball. And he's obviously the live guy. So it was evil versus good. It was. Because Rory was good because he didn't, you know, go to the dark side. And evil has won. And it turns out evil was a real good bloke. High-fiving everyone, signing every kid's autograph. What about Rory leaving in a tandy? Yeah, well. Through a tandy. Mate, devastated because he hasn't won a major for 10 years. Still got to go and congratulate the winner, though. Come on. He's done something nice on social media. But it's It's the story's about Bryson. It's about Bryson. Congratulate the guy. Bryson has changed golf. And the face, so he's the face of golf now, and people understand him. He, he just seen run around with the cup, running oh, yeah. around through the crowd, letting everyone touch the cup. He he didn't want it to end. He didn't want the day to end. And then he he jumped in. So this has happened to us before at seven. Uh, bloke by the name of Ben, our journo. When you remember when that girl went missing in Carnarvon? Yep. And it's all that all turned out well. Yep. So they, he did across the sunrise, and as he was crossing. One of the um, w- witnesses to what had happened came walking over and said, I saw what happened. And w- it went live to air, right? So it won an award. This is what Bryson did. Not as important as that. It's just sport. But <laughs> this guy's doing a cross. And he's in the bunker that, that he hit out. And Bryson comes over with the cup and goes, hey, hey. And they start chatting. And he goes, tell us about the hit. And then he said, why didn't you ever go? So he had a go. The bloke, the, the reporter had a go. I didn't see that. How'd First he one, go? he hit it over the back. Oh, yeah. Second time. He He's got done a, a right to get it out. This is no bullshit. He got tips from Bryson, right? Bryson said, do this. And he, he lobbed it closer than Bryson. Oh, wow. <laughs> 
He's the greatest bit of TV. Yeah, I bet you he couldn't have done it again. <laughs> Oh, mate, I've got to show you that. Now he, that Bryson, he's won everyone over now. And the fact that he didn't play Ryder's Cup was an absolute joke. How could the Yanks not put well, him in? Well, that's changing now. I think there's a bit of, they're coming together, the tours. While they can't, I don't believe in rankings because you can't be um, ranked if you've only played three no, rounds. Exactly. But, I, you know, I still think they're coming together. That's a good thing. What and it was a great event, as all the majors always are. Great sporting highlight of the weekend. Barrett, now it's time for this. Saddle up your camel. It's time for the Thirsty Camel Mailbag. Thank you to Thirsty Camel. We have some great mail this week. This week's special Smirnoff Vodka, 700 mil, only forty four ninety nine. And, of course, we have a $50 gift voucher to give away thanks to Thirsty Camel. Get your questions in to quartersandbarra at wanews.com.au. Barra, firstly, a spray. Oh, here we go. For some time now, I've wanted to write in regard in regards to Barra's medical opinions, especially regarding concussion, which he knows absolutely zero about. In the same note, fair play quarters for your common sense. But after Tuesday, 11th of June pod, where Barra gave out, went off about the demon's doctor, asking how they could let him back onto the pitch, then, then about the Hippocratic Oath. However, as Barra obviously doesn't know, doctors have to respect autonomy, i.e. patients can decide themselves. So if Petraka says he's fine and that he wants to play on, he can. The distinction with concussion is that players can be confused and found to be lacking capacity. Therefore, the decision is a medical decision. Love the pod and stay in your lane. That's from Sean. Now, I will note, Barra, this was sent on Thursday. So I reckon... I reckon he'd change his tune now. Email us again and tell yeah, us what Sean, you're thinking now. How are you feeling now, mate, that you've heard from Petrarca? <laughs> no, 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 I'm not doubling He's down. Entitled I'm just to saying, his opinion. Now that Petrarca's come out and said, there's no way I should have gone back out there, and yep. someone should have said to me, hey, what are you doing, mate? You can die. Yeah, he pretty, nearly died. Yeah, like, I don't much. have to be a frigging GP to know <laughs> that the guy nearly died. Even though my mate is, my good mate is a neurosurgeon. Yes, apparently. Has this guy got a neurosurgeon, mate? He might have. Text he me in. T- I want to know if he's, he's got one. All right. And so, also, tell us what you think I, after at my At my can... dinner parties, I talk about this stuff. Do you? I pretend to be dumb and play it down to be lowest common denominator and a man of the people. But I actually do do a bit of so this you research. Do, do you? Well, that, it's all deprecating. Remind me not to go to one of your dinner parties if you're talking about neurosurgery. <laughs> it's a bit boring, you reckon? No, yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think so. Hey, that, that, dick, was, that was all bulldust, by the way. Dear quarters and Barra, <laughs> the third quarter is no longer the premiership quarter, with big leads at the last change not insurmountable with current rules and playing styles. It makes for exciting finishes, which is great to watch, but puts umpiring decisions towards the end of the match under greater scrutiny. Marginal umpire calls during the match have little impact on the result as they generally swing both ways. But at the death knell of a game can deliver one team the win and we'll be dissecting that decision for days instead of the players' performances. No question, just a comment. That was from Michael. It is a good call. We do tend to focus on them when they're late because mm. they have more bearing on the yeah. result. And clearly at the weekend, it was the wrong decision. But who knows? Scott may not have kicked it. Yeah, and that's Ross Lyon said exactly that. He said, "Why are you focusing on those late ones? Well, you do and because you don't go back to gra- other decisions during the game and say that was wrong, that was right." And I mean, that's him doing his old sort of muddying the waters. How is Ross going, by the way? Oh, just I think they're struggling a bit. The same because Brisbane they, they showed a bit against Brisbane. Hey, we didn't mention a Marty, by the way. No, oh, no, we didn't. Nine goals, and why was he benched? Because <laughs> just horse John Long Longmuir says, sorry, John Longmire says, oh, we want to re- we want him next week. He's got a point, but let him chance kick to 10. kick ten. Come on, John Theater. Did he have, let he, him had, kick 10. he had one chance to kick ten, didn't he? I think he had the ball. Lo- was it Logan McDonald? I you think... don't see ten goal hauls anymore, <laughs> no. do you? And Logan was desperate to get it. to him. <laughs> Uh, oh, now, you'll love this days. next one, mate. Uh, remember our Vinny, our mate Vinny, who won the, the Thirsty Camel yes. Prize last week? Yep. And he's, he was, what was his mate's mailing name? in. Um, Paulie or something. Yeah, Paulie. Uh, about his mate who held a bit of a grudge From against Rocky. you. And you apologised. <laughs> yeah. So he has, um, he has mailed in. So great news, fellas. So the dude we apologised uh, has mailed in. Uh, no, his mate has. The dude hasn't. But just wait. Oh, where's the dude? Hey, wait. After Jeez. a double apology on Tuesday... Plus, then buying the man a beer on the Thursday, Paulie decided to call the hit off Barra. So the hit's off. He even said he will start listening again. 
So, Paulie, welcome back, mate. Welcome back. It's safe to say Barra will not be sleeping with the fishes anytime soon. Because you were a bit worried about that. <laughs> oh, of course, yeah. Luca Brasi was we, coming for we me. We were talking about putting <laughs> Barra into a witness protection for a, a while there. But um, anyway, good to have you back, Paulie. Uh, I have neurosurgeons for friends. I also have yeah. some shady characters. Yeah. <laughs> G'day, Quarters and Barra. Love listening to the pod. Big Frio fan. I love it when Frio get the game on their terms. They are very good when the opposition allow Frio to control the game and they can play their plan A game, i.e. Melbourne, the Melbourne result. But they struggle when the opposition doesn't allow that. And what concerns me is an apparent lack of any plan B, as we witnessed against the Bulldogs, uh, as you said earlier, Barra. Uh, is this on the coaches failing to have a plan B or on the players' inability to adapt? P.S. How good is the Bont? He loves playing Frio, and to beat both Pierce and Ryan to kick that goal is a special effort. Cheers, Randall. It's a good email, Randall. Um, it's, is, it's exactly what we said before. Is he now? I mean, I know that Heaney and I know Warner are right up there, but can can he win the Brownlow Bont? Yeah, and he's. I he, hope he's he does. probably the best player in the. Nothing comp. against Heaney, Warner, or any of those players, but this bloke should have won one by now. He should have won it last year. You know what was that school you went to? Norwood Secondary College, right. Norwood High School. You know when you used to do selection in the mm -hmm. in the schoolyard? Yep. And, you know, you'd pick. So I was always really sad. I'll be there was always one kid left. Yeah. Did you get picked early or where did uh, you get picked? About middle. Yeah. I was just a battler. So the bont would be picked first, wouldn't he? Oh, first every like, time. And that's that's what you... The prototype, size, shape, and ability of an AFL player. If you're picking someone, I mean, suppose Dacos kind of, he'd be next, would he? Oh, I'm having the bont because he can play tall. Yeah. You know? And he's so imposing. You, you know, look at him. The thing about him he is... He looks like John Travolta. He's their best midfielder and their best forward. Yeah. Well, he kicked three goals. Yeah. He, that left foot is so damaging. But we, we covered all that plan B we did, stuff. But so very prescient. Well done, Randall. Prescient. Uh, um, oh. the, you'll like this one. Now, I'll my dinner parties. I'll read this out. This was sent on Thursday, okay, by Scott. Uh, love your show and listen to every episode. Frio have won their last 40 games when they score 77 or more. The last loss scoring over 70 was round 8, 2019. Richmond won 111.86. And then, and then he emailed back on uh, after the weekend and said, as soon as I say that, dot, 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 dot. <laughs> Stick with them, Scott. <laughs> They'll be all right. G'day, Quarters and Barra. Love the podcast. Long-time listener, first-time emailer. I just wanted to highlight the inequity in the AFL in regards to the grand final always being played in Melbourne. Excuse me. Here are the last 10 years' grand final results. 2014, Hawthorne v Sydney, Hawthorne win. 2015, Hawthorne West Coast, Hawthorne win. 2016, Western Bulldogs versus Sydney, Western Bulldogs win. Uh, Richmond GWS, Richmond win. Uh, 2018, the outlier, Collingwood versus West Coast, West Coast win. Richmond 2019 versus GWS. Uh, 2020 and 21, not in Melbourne. 2022, Geelong v Sydney, Geelong win. And 2023, Collingwood, Brisbane, Collingwood win. You could actually add Hawthorne 2013 to that too against Fremantle. What this shows is that other than West Coast glorious win in 2018, only by four points, every time a Victorian plays a non-Victorian team in the GF, the Victorian team wins. And it goes on a bit, but... Um, uh, oh, here we go. I find it very funny that with Duff and Quarters, Duff was the sensible one and Quarters was the loose one. And that had to be kept in line. But now Quarters is the sensible one and Barra is the loose one <laughs> that needs to be kept in line. Anyway, I like it and keep the old stories coming in. That's from Tommy. Well Vote done, for Tommy. the old stories. Good on you, Tommy. Yeah, no, we like the old stories. Mate, I did something with Simon Garlic the other day, the CEO of the Dockers. And as you know, they're, they're pressing about uh, equal, equalising the comp. Yep getting an extra home game, all that sort of stuff. And his big thing was three grand finals. He's, yeah, he's big to, on it. We need to have three grand finals. And you know the problem with that is? Under the um, AFL's contract with the MCC, I think they have to play them all at the MCG. I know. Imagine that. And, but, but we don't care about the deals that they've done. But, I mean, it underpins the game, I suppose, yeah, the financially. The point of a three grand final series is you to spread it to around. What, yeah. And to use Optus Stadium. Arguably the best stadium in, in the world. This is what Laura Kane said. And I know there was an article today in the West, very good by Craig O'Donoghue, coming off some great work done by you, my friend, uh, easing the travel burden for WA teams. And they're going now, looks like the way they're going to go is instead of one away and one home, so the old home and away scenario, a block of games, a couple of weeks, you know, at home and then going away, That you know, that scenario, which you've talked about. But this is what Laura Kane and I said this because I was interviewing Pike and Don Pike and Simon Garlic 
at the Bank West Club at Optus Stadium, right? And I said, Simon, probably the biggest impediment to you getting a, you know, a worthwhile resolution is that West Coast have been so successful. It doesn't help your case. And, the, and they admitted, yeah, that's right. So this is what Laura said today, though. I understand what you know the interstate teams go through. I understand for the Perth people it's a long way. But I also understand a team like West Coast has been extremely successful. They've won premierships and a few of them. And they've had eras of great, great success with great, great players. And a plane ride hasn't seemed to stop them. So I think it's something Fremantle can aspire to. And it's something that West Coast should continue to aspire to in both men's and women's competition. Yeah, look, I like Laura. I find that a bit condescending. I, I, of course, Fremantle aspire to winning premierships. I mean, that just goes with the territory. But just because West Coast has been successful doesn't mean you can't change it. It's Clearly, bit... there's an inequity there that yeah. needs to be addressed. Clearly. All right, we'll address this one. Yep. Oh, Sage Man. Um, as a player, so put your player's hat on mm-hmm. and you hear your club whinging about how hard the travel is and how there's no not enough business class seats and all this sort of stuff. Does it give you an out? What effect does it have on you? Does it have it give you an out? Yeah, exactly. Oh, not if Oh, you're... geez, we're hard. It was like the Eagles in 2018. Oh, no, 20, when was the COVID? 2021, mm. when they went into the hub and they they yeah, spat the dummy, they dropped their bundle well. and they went shizen because Simo let the players get away with murder you know, blowing up all the old blokes with kids, can't see me kids, this is not fair. Whereas Richmond said, stuff this, we can win a flag here. And that's exactly what happened. I think, and that's, you know, the Dockers' major problem is mental. Don't tell me that loss on the weekend wasn't 90% mental. I think mm, Caleb clearly. Sarong said it last night. Clearly. He said, you know, we're, physically we trained our asses off. We prepared it in every sense. We thought we were ready. But mentally we didn't switch on. Two to go, and we'll finish with a really okay. special one. Uh, hi, Quarters and Barra. I have taken Quarters' suggestion, and I'm trying to read Wuthering Heights <laughs> before <laughs> Sunday's Fremantle home fixture. If I started reading it after their last home game, that distant Friday night fixture, I could have also read War and Peace. Thank you, Michelle. <laughs> Very funny. Hey, stick with Wuthering Heights. You'll really enjoy it. I've never read War and Peace. There's no freaking that, way you've read Wuthering Heights. Is that, well, War and Peace, is that Do Dostoevsky, you... is it? Oh, don't start. Anyway. Um, why was why was Wuthering Heights so controversial? One of the most, the greatest novels ever written in English, just for all our friends who have a crack. Oh, hang on, there was been, a great one's written in blah, blah, blah. translated to many other languages. Oh, those Greeks did the Iliad. Why was it so controversial? Kathy and Heathcliff, uh, tell me. Mate, there was a lot of depictions of cruelty, wasn't there? Oh, yeah. Okay. And, and domestic abuse. It's not exactly the greatest thing at the moment, is it? No. You reckon? Oh. And, the, and the Victorian morality and the, how the man run the show, show and all that. Exactly. Yeah, so it's a bad book, Don't mate. Don't cancel culture, Don't mate. start mentioning Don't Wuthering Heights around here. Don't cancel culture on me. <laughs> now, let's finish with a really, really good. You'll love this one. This one's from Steve of Sorrento. <clears throat> Hi, Quarters and Barra. Thanks for your enthusiastic response to my letter suggesting that Neil Danaher and his daughter Beck be nominated as Joint Australians of the Year. I wrote a similar letter which was published in the West last week and I've received overwhelmingly positive feedback from that as well. Your response and that of many others has been that Neil and Beck would both be very worthy winners and someone should nominate them. The great Hawthorne mentor John Kennedy famously said, don't think, do something. And so I have. I'm writing to let you know that I found the website on which to nominate someone for Australian of the Year and have initiated the process to nominate them both. I fully expect nothing to come of this. I'm not so sure. We obviously sadly don't know how much longer Neil will be with us and I expect they are both too busy um, or not interested in receiving such an award. I think they'd be interested. But I don't, didn't want to die wondering, and it would be great if they were at least made aware that they had been nominated and their nominations were widely and strongly supported. Great. Well done, Steve. Uh, clap, clap, clap Mate, to you. very good. Great. Very good, Steve. Is it, he'd be a leading contender, wouldn't he? Yeah, he would be. Give us your best uh, don't think do. Don't think do don't, something. Yeah, that's it. How many times did he say do? It was just a, don't it was, think do. Pretty sure it was three-quarter time of the 1975 grand final when North was about to win their first ever, and Hawthorne clearly wasn't going to win. Um, I remember listening to – I didn't go to that game. I was underneath an old 
big wooden transistor. Oh, it was a big radio thing. Sure, I didn't know where you were going with that. <laughs> listening to it uh, in my parents' lounge room. What sort of radio was it? It was like this big. I've actually got it. One of those I've old. I've got it now. It was a huge, big wooden. Had a record player. Ones with the globes and all that. Now. Oh, it was massive. <laughs> it was so big. Um, I've got it now. I've still got it at home. But uh, I remember listening to that game and. I was Standing on sad. one leg so you could hear. <laughs> yeah. no, I was laying underneath it. But why, uh, why didn't you? Why were you? L- I was a bit. I was nine. I don't know. I was a bit young. I went then. Um, but I went. Seventy-seven was my first grand don't, final. The draw. Don't think. Do. Mm. Do. Inspiration. Who was in seventy-five? Hawthorne North. Yeah, yeah. Who's the? Who were the dudes he was talking to? Who, can you remember? Oh, Peter. Yep. Yeah, uh, Lee, Lee nah. Matthews, Peter Knights, nah, Scott, Knight, Michael nah. Tuck. Yeah, they were all playing in seventy-five. Yes, Lee Matthews. Um, Jeff Ablett, um, Bernie Jones. Lethal, don't think, do. Oh, yeah. And then Hawthorne, of course. And who were they playing? North. Yeah, right. And the Hawthorne reversed the result the following year. So who would have been playing on Matthews? Uh, Barry Cable. Okay. Who else might have been playing on him? Um, oh, gee, Paul Felton. Barry Davis. Barry Davis. Barry Davis. Bit, bit of a tagging role, yeah. Barry. Lethal, don't think, do yeah. on Davis. Hey, what about this? You know how we're going to mention my friend yes, uh, passed away. No, let's, let's not do it. Let's uh, yeah, cause it, uh, you know, it, it's, I, I'm, it's actually too emotional and it, we're having a reasonable time here. Mm-hmm. I did want to mention one thing though. <laughs> it's a bloke. Have you met Ray Rabb? No. Ray Rabb, one of our cameramen. Oh, I may have. Yeah, yeah. you probably bumped into him sort yeah, of around the place. He's yeah. been with us for 50 years. He's been a cameraman for 50 years, all right? And just to give you the background, he's one of our best. He's retiring, right, after 50 years. And I just wanted to mention some of the sporting things he's done. He was the one who shot that famous vision in the 2006 premiership. When, so Maney, Maney was the journo <clears throat> yep. and Ray was the cameraman. They've got into the, into the change rooms and they're waiting for the team to come back in. And remember that famous shot when Cuzzy comes in and he sees Maney? And it gets played a lot now because of what happened later on. And they just start hugging each other. We did it. We did it. Have you remember that shot? Course, that that yeah. was Ray Rubb, magnificently well shot. 2018, he goes in there with Ryan Daniels. Wasn't even supposed to be in there because even though it's a seven event, you can only have X number of cameras. And he charged in and he ended up in the team huddle in the middle of the song. <laughs> well <laughs> so done, with Ray. All those great pictures of the 2018 singing the team song with everyone around. But probably for me, his most famous one. Remember when Malthouse went big on the old growth forest? Yes. Remember when he, I do. he basically changed, helped change the legislation here? Yes. And the timber workers went out against and, him? Uh, and I don't think uh, the CEO of the Day of the Eagles was too impressed with no. him buying into politics. And so I'll, I'll get to what actually happened with Ray, but just so people know, angry pro, pro-logging residents of Manjimup vowed to never watch another Eagles game, to cancel their insurance policies with SGIO, <laughs> the Eagles the sponsor, sponsor yeah. and they planned a public burning of Eagles flags and scarves down at the local timber mill, right? This is all because Mick yeah. came out swinging against the go- people carving up the old growth forest or whatever it was. And Mick, Boutrous, Boutrous Gali that he was, so they actually came to Subi Oval. Were you there that day? Oh, I remember it well. The timber workers brought their trucks yeah, and we're yeah. training. <laughs> comes all these friggin' timber trucks, right? Big oh, you blokes. were training. Yeah, we yeah. were training. Yeah. So we get, and so we had mic'd up Mick for something. Uh, it had something to do with what actually the protest, but he was doing a positive. But they they so they ambushed his positive, st- you know, uh, press conference. But because he had a mic on, we heard him go around the back and speak to the timber workers. And how do you reckon? How do you reckon he conducted himself with the timber workers? Yeah, I don't know. You like, tell. he was like Henry Kissinger. Oh, it was like, <laughs> now listen, boys, I know your whole livelihood hinges on, you know, carving up timber and stuff, but, you know, I, I have to take this position. <laughs> he was giving it the biggest <laughs> Henry Kissinger effort. And so Ray got Ray, the shot. Ray was the dude. Unfortunately, we couldn't use that vision. Why? <laughs> Guess why? Oh, okay. So it uh, got shut down and disappeared somewhere. But Well done, Ray, and what a great career, and um, enjoy retirement. We miss you. Yeah, 50 years. Uh, pretty, uh, pretty. not many places that... Um... No, that's a long career. But Mick later on had the temerity to say, this is no bulldust, this is typical Mick. I mean, we all love Mick, but 
<laughs> he said he got more letters of congratulations for his Save the Forest campaign that he did from the 1992 Premiership. Is that right? <laughs> That's what he reckons. <laughs> Just rewrite. I'm history. not so sure, <laughs> but we love you, Mick. Uh, oh. You've been listening to Quarters and Barra. We've been brought to you by Tab Touch. Got the touch? Download the Tab Touch app today. Chances are you're about to lose for free and confidential support. Visit gamblinghelponline.org.au. Thank you, Barra. Thank you for listening. We'll be back on Thursday to have a look at the next round of footy. Mm-hmm.